Welcome to Cute Creatures in Sci-Fi. I'm Kathy Sullivan, and we're presenting here at Construm 2022, Satellite 9. And I'm going to let the other panelists introduce themselves. So, Chris. Hi, I'm Chris Coulter. I have been coming to Console Room for years, and I'm a big fan of cute critters. I'm a doctor by trade. That has nothing to do with this panel. Um, but if I'm a little scatterbrained, that that probably explains it. It's been a wild month. <laughs> Jim? Hi, I'm Jim Seuss. Um, I just like cute creatures. I'm a big Doctor Who fan. And what else can I say? You know, I you know, I keep reptiles as pets. So my cuteness goes beyond normal cuteness as in animals. So yeah. And I'm Catherine Sullivan. I write young adult fantasy and science fiction as well as being a major Doctor Who fan. So in my short story collection, Agents of Depths and Apprentices, I've got a lot of cute creatures ranging from cats to raccoon-like beings and talking horses. So the panel description is, we all know Baby Yoda is actually called the child, but Baby Yoda starts to sound so much cuter. What other cute creatures do we love, whether friend or foe? And I'm thinking we're going to kind of break this down so everybody gets to present a few. Just to give you an example, I'm going to start off with two. It's like when I first started reading science fiction and fantasy, I loved the fire lizards in Dragon Song and Dragon Singer by Anne McCaffrey. So that's what this one's from. And I ran across Fuzzy in Alan E. Norris's Star Search. It looks like a tiny three inch pink fuzz ball, but can sprout legs, mouth, and black eyes when it wants. It also allows its alien owner to sense and influence his other emotions. And I kind of like that idea, that little cute pink fuzzball. Did any of you guys come across that story? Oh yeah, I remember reading those as a kid. Yeah. I, I was more into the dragons though. I liked the white dragon much better. Oh, back with Anne yes. McCaffrey's book, yeah. yeah. Yes. It seems to be a, a strong uh, uh, tendency to, to make uh, dragons telepathic in uh, several different um, books, movies. Mm -hmm. Kind of an interesting trend. Yeah, because it's a little easier to interpret it by telepathy than trying to figure out what they're snarling at you for. Or at least empathy. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Which is good enough if they're snarling. Yes. Yeah, you want to start yeah. off with three or five characters? So do you want to share? You know, I can take the lead. Okay. Um, you know, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to pull up a picture. Since you've already made mention of him, we're going to go ahead and talk about him. Grogu. Cute little picture. He was probably, you know, the epitome of cute creatures. He has taken over, you know, marketing for Star Wars or you know, everywhere. He was everywhere, everywhere. Memes, toys, and he's still huge, still today. I have a friend of mine who named her Frog after Grogu. So, yeah, you know, one of the epitome of cuteness right there, looking at Ahsoka. I, again, great, great little image. Um... Let's see here. Um, another creature that I really like, and it's based off of these guys. You're like, well, gosh, what are these? These are called puffins. They're, you know, mainly found in the North Atlantic, you know, on islands along the coast. And I just unshared. But, um, you know, they were so everywhere on this island that... They had to, they had to do something. They had to cover these guys up and, oh, I'm having technical difficulties now with my Zoom. Stop it, Zoom. I want to just share. Oh, come on. My, my uh, understanding was that they, um, so instead of just trying to digitally uh, erase the, the native uh, birds, they decided that they would kind of uh, CGI over them. Is that right? Yes. 
uh, so so uh, I thought that was ingenious. And uh, if anything, I think what they created was even cuter than the than the native buttons. Poor. <laughs> yes. There we go. Aww. And they were amazing. Um, they were cute, and the and I liked how they wrote them into the story. You know, yes. I mean, they actually became characters instead of a nuisance, you know, for filming on set. So, yeah, they were just adorable. Um, can't get enough of them. So, yeah. Uh, what else do I have? Oh, I've got well, so were, many. They more were that... a nuisance. They were a nuisance yes. to the characters, though. I love that. I mean, they got everywhere. Oh, yeah. They got in the ship. Yeah. Um, they were uh, kind of nesting in them? the in the Millennium Falcon. Yep. Oh yeah. Should Another kind of one. Yeah. What's this one? Babu Frick. Yeah. Oh, he was yeah. the he was the guy working on C three PO. Um, he was the one who was a you know working on him, fixing him, and trying to get the memory you know make him you know he was going to erase him or give him a reboot, and uh, yeah, he was this little. Fix it character. He was great. He was adorable. He was probably uh, a good friend of mine. He was his favorite Star Wars character, you know, from all of that. He thought he was cuter than, you know, Grogu. So, yeah. Um, I, th I think the voice really made that character, actually. Oh, he did. Great sound design on that. Yes. Oh, totally. Um,. Yeah, so there's a few of mine. Anybody else? What else? Kristen, how about you? All right, let me get in here. Dun, 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 dun. All right. You guys seeing that? Yep, way off in the side. Yep. Okay. Yeah, right. Full screen. Got it. Come on. Come on. Don't do this to me. Mm. Well, let me try that again. Um, Ewoks in general. Oh, somebody grab something. Else. Yeah, Ewoks in general. Mm -hmm. Here, here, hold on. Here, hold on. Let me do it. Boom. Doot. There we go. Oh. <laughs> Ewoks, right there. Yes. Great. Thank you. <laughs> I was trying to show you a picket a wicket. Yeah. Well, well, when, pick, when pick, you pick, see, right over here. So yeah. when you see one midget Wookie, you've seen them all. Well, well, but you can never get enough of the Ewoks. Yeah, the Ewok <laughs> cartoon series was so much fun. I yeah. liked that. But what was interesting was that it was supposed to have been a planet of Wookies. Instead, they went with Ewoks. Yeah. Right. Well, I think the whole point was to have kind of a race of teddy bears that actually ended up uh, de helping destroy the empire, mm -hmm. which which I thought was the greatest little subplot. And I know people like to disparage them, and they, they're sick of they hate the the original song uh, at the end of uh, uh, yeah, Return of the Jedi. But I love it. I love the um, Yub Nub. I, I love Yub Nub. <laughs> well, I, I think part of it too was that George Lucas is a marketing genius. Um, he was the guy that essentially, you know, instead of, you know, taking so much money, he said, I'll take the marketing rights and made even more money off all the characters with all the toys. And I think this was when once I saw, I remember seeing this in the theater and I, I loved them. I thought it was great. And I go, Oh my God, I want one. You know, and I realized that was a marketing ploy right there to make you guys go out, run out and buy an Ewok for your very own, you know, to have a toy. But I don't think they ever made big old plushies, though, of them. 
It would have been great, though. Imagine having a life-size plushie of an Ewok. Especially when you're that yeah. size as a kid. Right, exactly. I think that would have been a great toy. Because yeah. even when I was an the Ewok, series, they didn't have one. Chris, yeah. go ahead. I, I was an Ewok for several years for Halloween. I <laughs> um, uh, it, it worked great in Colorado in October. Uh, I got to wear my um, down coat underneath. And uh, I got, don't tell my rabbits, but I got, we got some real rabbit fur. And so my mom made me a, a, a face oh. and uh, we did up the leather, leather bits and all that. I wish I had pictures. It was so adorable. And then I outgrew it, of course. Um, but that's how much I adored the Ewoks. Yeah. Hmm. Did you have another one you wanted to share? Um, yeah. Let me see. Do it right this time. Oh, those. They were cool. Yeah, I thought they were a neat creature. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Fathers um, from the newest uh, trilogy. Um, I don't know about cute, but they're beautiful, and yeah. the way that they that they lope along, mm -hmm. uh, just just uh, just charming. And they were meant to be, of course. We were supposed to fall for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and then find ah yes. Oh. Oh, yeah. the crystal foxes are. Vulptex apparently is what they're they're called. Um. And they really had, I guess, working models of these things, and they're just gorgeous. I want one. <laughs> <laughs> or at least a paperweight, you know, just, uh, uh, and the cinematography that they did with them was, was just so astounding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Probably one of my favorite critters of Star Wars. Yeah. So many critters from Star Wars that we could talk about. Yeah. Um, some of which are quite ugly. But, but sometimes um, they're so ugly, they're cute. Yeah. Are you still seeing what I'm seeing? Uh, cruel and blur. Yeah. yeah. Um. So so okay, a, a little bit ugly, but ah, there we go. But 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 so ugly, they're cute, which is kind mm -hmm. of a whole category I wanted to get into. Um, okay. And and one of the various uh, riding conveyances that they use in the Star Wars universe, um, most of which are quite cute. Let me see. I'm gonna do that one. Oh, the tauntauns. Tauntauns. Okay. So they smell terrible. Mm -hmm. um, that that has been established, I guess. But but um, the sounds they make and the way that they move. Okay. So the 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 motion capture whatever the 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 not not motion capture but animatronic sort of technology mm -hmm. that they had um at the time a little bit rough around the edges but but i just i thought they were i wanted one <laughs> um um i didn't i didn't want to sleep in one with it on entrails but i wanted one um but but they probably wouldn't have survived uh in temperate zones i think you really have to be in extremely cold weather for this critter but at the time, though, they were uh, worked on by Phil Tippett, who was one of the leading stop motion people in Hollywood at the time. Yeah. And uh, stop motion. Yes. Yes. That's what it was. Yep. And that, you know, it, it's the same technology, of course, that they used for King, the original King Kong mm -hmm. and yeah. films like uh, Jason and the Argonauts. So a little film history there. And again, I. You know, I thought it was really cool, but yeah, I'm, I'm kind of, I would like to have seen how they would do it now, you know, with a uh, really good CGI. No, I've already gotten an busy. idea of it from the, the creatures in the later series. Mm-hmm. Found this online, thought that was cute. <laughs> Selling winter jackets. <clears throat> yeah. In the soda, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, exactly. Right, 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 right. All right. Okay. Anybody have anything else? 
Yep, I've got some of mine. Yep. If I can share, share my screen now. Get this thing to work. Okay, I'm old, so one of my favorite cartoon was Herculoids. Herculoids. Yeah. Oh wow. I didn't like Clop and Gleep, but I like the fine dragon could basically have laser blasts from its eyes and its tail, as well as fire breathing. And who could resist that wonderful rhinoceros? Yep. Like rhinoceros. Totally. I forget I, all I'm the names. I'm detecting a theme. <laughs> I'm detecting a there theme was, with the dragons here, Catherine. <laughs> yep. There was Zaku, who was a dragon, Eagle, who was a rock ape, Contour, and Glop and Gleep. Yep. Now, if I can go to the next slide. See, Glop and Gleep win the cuteness there. Sorry. And this it, one. What is it about? Kind of amorphous. Yeah. yeah. Another one that was so ugly, but it was so cute. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that whole menagerie they had on Flight of the Navigator, all these different little creatures that were just cool. Yep. I'm trying to find the button again. Here we go. Because I got a bunch of them. And yes, I oh, would be anime a lot. Ooh. That little fox squirrel yes. from Flight mm -hmm. from Valley of the Wind. Can be other fishes, but oh, if you like them. It liked you. And recently, Morris from Shang Chang Chi, like, it's an actual chaos oh, creature. Yeah. And I mean, th at first, the idea of no face is kind of, eh? But it was so cute the way they portrayed it in that movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was well done. Yeah. And seeing a whole herd of them, that was, wow. That was nifty. Yep. Yeah. And the nine tail foxes in the back. Yeah. And then I'm also a um, Stitch fan, and all the other experiments was just. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because, of course, Disney can do cute really well in animation. Yes, they can. It seems to me that a lot of the cute cr creatures that we see in uh, fantasy, sci fi, uh, certainly kids' shows, that they're going with a. What appeals to us from from our own babies? Mm, it's pretty big eyes. Um, big eyes, sometimes snub nose, mm -hmm. large faces, large heads compared to the rest of the body. Sometimes large feet and hands and head and the torso is tiny. Yeah. Um, and certainly baby noises are, like in the case of Grogu, uh, t yeah. totally. Yeah. Now for the last picture of Lilo uh, or Stitch and Cousins, for a lot of those who are not in the know, who may have only seen Lilo and Stitch, that is actually from the uh, daytime animated series, mm -hmm. you know, that Disney right. did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, there's a little spinoff. off going off to find all the other experiments. That exactly. And it was a cute series. Yes, it, it was fun. I, I really liked it, but I'm a huge, you know, animation fan. So I was really happy to, see, you know, Lilo and Stitch is one of my favorites. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the whole alien setup and then having Stitch being a bad dog and, and trying to yep. remodel its behavior. That was just a great mixture. Exactly. It was well done. Mm -hmm. Jim. Oh, let's see what else. Well, I can present this little guy we talk about him we all know uh, this yes. little guy oh. <laughs> gizmo yes um i actually own one you know i i mean not an actual you know mogwai but i have a little you know plushie he's up there i can grab him here in a little bit and show everyone at the end but uh, he was just one of my um, all favorites from the 80s. I mean, I saw this and like, oh, wow, that's really, really cool. And it's a it's a Christmas movie. Mm -hmm. Pure and simple. A lot of people forget that. Um, it's a horror Christmas movie. 
Oh, I liked it. How Christmas has ghost stories, so horror works. Exactly. And I liked how they took the spin where, you know, these cute little creatures become this horrid little monster if they eat after midnight. And, you know, once you break the rules, bad things happen. So, yeah, it was just, uh, it was a phenomenal. And I'm surprised that they never gone more than a couple of, you know, sequels Mm -hmm. or even a series. Um, Again, it's just, you know, he was all a puppet and he just looked so amazing. Look at the terror in his eyes. Um, (laughs) So we'll stop here with that. And let's see if I can bring up something else here. I got, you know, I have a whole list, but. Um, but we, every, we're, we're double tracking on some of the lists that I had because one of the animals that I had was, um, you know, Stitch. <laughs> um, but, you know, another one we can talk about is, let's talk about Star Trek. Star Trek, mm-hmm. we're, we're dealing with a lot. Now, I don't have any pictures of them, but one of the uh, my favorites was, and I really liked this idea, was Porthos. And Enterprise. Yes. Porthos was Archer's pet dog. You know, and I like the concept of, you know, you know, in Star Trek having a pet, you know, you know, in Star Trek, you know, and Porthos was a really cool little dog, and it was just kind of cool. Uh, it was Data a little beagle. Cat. Hmm. Data had his cat. Oh, yes. Um, Data had the cat. And in Discovery, uh, what is the cat's name? Grudge? Grudge. Yeah. And I, I'm sorry, but I, one of the plots I always would love to see is actually that cat is super intelligent. Oh. Yeah, oh, there he is. Oh. Um, I hadn't quite gotten him downloaded. <laughs> But uh, would have been uh, would be really cool if they made Grudge like this super intelligent cat, but he doesn't really talk, or people don't see him talk. But he's actually the one really piloting the ship and really in charge. <laughs> I, I think that would be a grief would be kind of hilarious and great because eugenics, you know, was a major part of Star Trek. Why didn't they experiment with animals and be okay? Yeah, you know, having intelligent cats. God, the imagine that, um, and that's so sci-fi too. Um, another famous, and we all know what they look like: Tribbles. Tribbles are the epitome of cuteness that came out of the 1960s. There's just these little balls of fur that keep on growing and growing and growing and reproducing as they ate. So, and they've only had them a few, you know, episodes, you know, not, they don't use them that much, but they're there. Yeah. They had them in one of the, an- there we go. The animated yeah. one. Yep. And that's it. Uh, more tribbles, team. more troubles or. Yeah. Yep. And that's when you actually run into the natural enemy of the tribbles. That thing that did the Klingon constructors, they actually find it on that planet. Oh, wow. So, okay. You know, something I want to say gl- gl- Globber or yeah. something. Is that right? I'm trying to remember the name of the thing. Something like that. Yeah. Well, and I also think one of my favorite stories with them was the um, uh, Deep Space Nine story where they go back in time. And... Is that more troubles, more trouble? Yes. Yes. And I... I yep. Is that right it? There. Mm-hmm. Yep. And they're throwing And that's exactly the same problem. <laughs> right, but in in that scene, they're throwing out tribbles and they're hitting Kirk in the head, you know, <laughs> with the tribbles. And it was just I, I loved how they did the editing from the new episode with the old. Wonderful, right? Mm-hmm. It was wonderful. Well done. So yeah, uh, God, what else? Do I, you know, I could go. You know, he's not. A, I don't have an image of him. I can pull one up, but what we all know about him is Fitzgig. 
Ah, yes. From the Dark uh, Crystal. Yes. Oh, yeah. All mouth and a lot of fur. Kind of looked like a triple and still started yelling. Yes. Now, if you folks have never... I, I think everybody has seen Fitzgig, but... Here, open, link a new tab. Fabulous use of uh, Muppetry. Is that right? That was the Muppet? Yes. Or, or, or at least Henson's, yep. Henson's people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right here. We'll go here. Boop, share. Right there. Look at that. <laughs> He's a treble with eyes, yes. a nose, <laughs> and teeth. All the way down its throat. <laughs> yes. So one of the cutest creatures, too, to ever hit Muppetdom. Muppetdom? Is that a word, <laughs> Muppetdom? Well, it is now. <laughs> it is, it now. is now. Damn it, on this panel. <laughs> it is now a full-fledged word. But, um, yeah, just... You know, originally we were like going, oh, we got to deal with sci-fi, but yet there are so many awesome fantasy creatures like Fitzgig, mm -hmm. you know, out there and so on. Oh, is that a trouble on your head? Yep. Oh, yes. And on her shoulder. <laughs> oh, okay. It's yes. multiplying as we watch. It's, 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 it's like the, the, the uh, smartest idea for prop ever. Yeah. It's probably the easiest to make prop. So uh, I can see why these things really took off mm -hmm. in popularity. Um, even I can make one, and that's saying something. <laughs> oh, and I honestly, I think Fitzgig was an actual easy one to design as well. You know, just a mouth, fur, and teeth. And feet that stamps every now and then, too. Yeah. <laughs> well, but... at least with uh, Fitzgig, you know how he's eating. Because uh, of the tribbles, I could never quite figure that out. <laughs> what else? Exactly, that's, that's true. And, and the whole I, the whole concept of the reproduction, it's like, you know, where do they come out? But I won't get into that. Yeah. <laughs> well, they could. it could be like, you know, Mogwai. They just pop out. Boop, 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 boop. Yep. You know, they butt out. Fishing or something. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, there, there's some, you know. Yeah. Kathy, do you have anything else anymore? Well, going back to Star Trek. Now, these are, are more, they could be sapient or they could be proto sapient. The Horda. The oh, Star Trek, yeah. that's what really, it wasn't the Vulcans or the other aliens that really impressed me as aliens. It was a Horda that, like, this is definitely an intelligent life form. And. Hmm. Little Fuzzy, I don't know if you book, know that book series from H. Bean Piper. They're kind of like Ewoks, but they did from a lot earlier. It was another life form. Okay. It was called Little Fuzzy, and they were kind of adopted, but they were natives of a particular planet that the colonists settled. And another book related creature is like, okay, I like birds. In Janet Kagan's Mirable, there is this one creature called him a bob. Actually, the full name is a thingamabob, but they shorten it to a bob. Ugh, I dodged and turned at the same time. Neither action saved me from a blast of foul breath in the face and a gronk in both ears that nearly deafened me. Gronk to you too, I said when I got my breath back. And bob was so pleased I talked at language that it rattled the scales all over and let out a second air horn gronk. It looks like a parrot, but it's three feet tall. It's got scales that were striped, all shades of green. And the top of its head, the fur was unfused and actually fur-like. And it's got talons that basically walks on. So it looks like kind of like a dodo, except it's got scales that it rattles when it's really happy. Like, I love some of these book description characters. My Bob turns up in a couple of short stories, Jenny Kagan's series. And it's just a uh, cute creature and it's really uh kind of a proto intelligent because it learns quickly because gronk does okay. it, that's, it's, it's just a cute creature okay i read a lot of books so i put a lot of no in, no in, in, so. i appreciate descriptions of of creatures 
uh, whether they're sentient or not, that that invite you to um, use your own imagination to visualize them. I think in some cases we do lose something um, when they're translated to screen. Yeah. Um, although, although sometimes I appreciate how they are actually brought to life, especially mm -hmm. with the, the modern era where, where basically if you can imagine it, you can bring it to life. Mm -hmm. um, although they did pretty darn well in the eighties and nineties. Now it's like, um, they really do seem real. Yeah. And it's good and bad. Um, there's something to appreciate with a book where, where the sky's the limit. Mm -hmm. I think, I think you would agree. Well, I've got one here. Okay. And share. Cause nobody, we haven't touched upon these guys yet. Ah, the oh, Lhasa yeah. Raptors, you know, from Jurassic Park. Blue. Okay, that one's cute. <laughs> Blue, yes. Yeah. Oh, they, they're all cute. You know, I love how, you know, they've been designing the dinosaurs. And I really like Blue's design where, you know. They've she, been you know, better with feathers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, one of the, you know, everybody complains, go, oh, they don't have feathers. They don't have this. They don't have that. Well, you know, one, what was the, what was the one line? You know, we can make them look like what they were supposed to look like or make them the way people want them to look like. You know, because the characters knew that these didn't look like real dinosaurs. They weren't making real dinosaurs, per se. Mm -hmm. They were making designer dinosaurs. And, you know, that was one of the lines that I said, oh, yeah, that's because they were talking about, oh, God, not Indominus Rex. Oh, it may have been Indominus Rex uh, or the Indoraptor. It was one of the two mm -hmm. because they wanted, you know, people want to see a creature with more teeth, more fangs and, you know, claws and everything scary looking. And not some, I mean, if you put a T-Rex with fur, he's going to look like a giant chick, you know, with fuzz. <laughs> and I'm all for that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, that would I mean, be cute. That would be really cute. <laughs> well, there are pictures out there. And, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, T-Rex. They are funny. Feathers. They are so funny. That's not the one I'm yeah. looking for. Um, oh, gosh. They're all serious now. <laughs> there was one that was just uh, Feathers Chick. Giant Chicken. <laughs> Although that one looks close enough. Yep. Yeah. Right here. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. It's kind of like a parakeet, I think. Yeah. Or, but yeah, budgie. Mm -hmm. yeah. But they Aww. look so cute. Yes. Imagine seeing that coming at you. You'd be like, a, oh, cute. Aww. Romp. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> but um, yeah, whoever designed this did an amazing job. Yeah. You know, imagining them to look like giant chicks. Because <laughs> I would never have thought about that. But yeah, I, you know, I'm for you know, I'm looking forward to the next Jurassic Park or World, you know, the end of the you know the six movies. But um, because I think now they they actually what was it? There's a sequence in the opening that they did. They showed the first five minutes out there in, on, in the trailers, and it shows a T-Rex with feathers, Aww. with a little fuzz. Yo, chick fuzz. So, yeah, I'm kind of curious to see how things, you know, how they're gonna design the next one. Yeah, I'm all I excited. Seen them since the second film. Hmm. Oh, I haven't seen them since the second film, so I was like, oh, okay. Oh, oh, I've got, I own them all. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I'm a big, I'm a, a huge dinosaur fan. Dinosaurs and monsters, I'm all for it. You know, like you know, kaiju. Bring on the big monsters. Mm -hmm. I'll enjoy them. 
So yeah, I mean, not the dinosaurs n- TV series, huh? I love not the baby. <laughs> um, but you know, to tie in this panel with another panel coming up at at Console Room 2022 at Satellite Nine, there is going to be a panel on King Kong and Godzilla, Ooh, and we're going to be talking yeah. about the MonsterVerse. That'll be with Taylor Sisko and Alita oh. Spagan. And we're going to be talking about, you know, King Kong, uh, the the MonsterVerse movies. Okay. So it'll be fun. Yeah. Kathy, if you want to join us, you can come on in, sit down, and <laughs> chat away. No, but you probably might want to get Meg in because she's a Godzilla fan. Yes, she, she is. In the audience. Exactly. So we're kind of excited for that. I can't wait for our console room 22, uh, 2022. In a couple of weeks, because mm-hmm. this is the first, you know, so we've got 19 days to go. Mm-hmm. So I got to request that day off, Dan. <laughs> Better plan. Better plan ahead. Better uh, start my requesting now. So, yeah. Do I have time to squeeze in? Uh, maybe go a right ahead. Yeah. We can yeah. talk. Um, about- I thought this might follow pretty well after the um, Jurassic Park, where it, it kind of occurs to me that that's one of those uh, examples with uh, the younger velociraptors, where they're awfully cute babies, but then when they grow up, they're mm, not as manageable. So I've got another franchise. Oh. Um, so this is this is the the polywog. Uh, pre-toed version of of uh, Dart uh, from Stranger Things, and then um, there there are four stages or five stages, I guess, to this life form. Um, Let's see them all. The, the second one is the the the, the Frogo Gorgon. They, they just named them according to what they looked like, I guess. The Frogo Gorgon, which is slightly larger and has legs, kind of like a tadpole. And then uh, the Catagorgon, uh, which which is starting to get maybe a little bit less manageable. Um, it's big enough to eat a cat. Um, and then we have the 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 Dogagorgon, where they just started calling it a demodog, and referred to it as such in, in the in the series, I think. Uh, and here's where they really start to get uh, uh, to be a, a tremendous menace. And um, the last stage, I guess, is the actual uh, kind of mind flayer, enormous version. So that's another franchise that I thought was worth actually mentioning. And tying in with that would be Goose from Captain Marvel. What it oh, actually yes. is. Because <laughs> it looks like a cat, yeah. but... Um... When those tentacles come out and start swallowing people in, in the Tesseract, it's like, okay. And what's funny is that in the comic, Goose was named Chewy, and it was Rocket who kept going, oh my gosh, that's not a cat, that's a... A florican. Yeah. Yes. And the cat was pregnant and had baby florkins. Like, okay, well... <clears throat> I, I never read the comic on that, though. Oh. Um, I, I, I'm going to have to get the trade paperbacks in that Captain Marvel series. Well, that's it's way back, so it's not going to get... You're not going to run into Rocket for... Oof, I forgot how, what year that actually came out. Okay. But will we see our Flurkin back again? Because it looked like Goose was left behind on Earth according to the ending credits of Captain Marvel. Mm-hmm. Because it was still in uh, Nick Fury, Fury's office. And that that happened way before the Avengers, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In the Avengers movies, so... So it depends on how long Flurkins live. Right. Yeah. It would be cool Do if... either... It... Go on. Sorry. Sorry. You go ahead. 
No, no, no. I'm, my thought's over. Um, thought? What's that? Squirrel? <laughs> Are there any alien squirrels we should be talking about? Um, um, I, I had uh, just another franchise I wanted to sneak in there briefly. Um, do either one of you watch or read um, The Expanse? Yes. So um, the latest season... Has started Stranger. to introduce. Yep. Yes, yes, they started ah. to introduce some alien fauna from the planet Laconia, and I believe these are called sunbirds. Um, yep. And the the demise of one of these little cute little bird like creatures actually uh, does figure prominently in the plot. I think that's that's going to come in the next few yep. episodes. It, it already um, has it, happened. Uh, oh, okay, okay. I'm behind by an episode. I think. Um, and it has to do also with this critter, um, which is kind of what they're referring to with the name of the episode, strange dogs at the beginning of the season. Sure. This is a strange dog, but it's a little bit more than that. I won't, I won't do any spoilers. So I was really okay. pleased to start seeing some alien fauna, um, from, uh, uh the expanse. Uh, I, I find both, both of those awfully cute. I mean, the, the little bird critter is, is kind of meant to be cute, but the, the other uh, dog-like thing I think has some appeal, but maybe not when you figure out what it is. I don't know. <laughs> or it's one of those so ugly it's cute creatures. Almost. Almost. Um, I might have one more of that ilk if I can find it. Um, let me pull this up real quick. So I'm a fan of the, um, the books by, um, Niven and Purnell. Um, the first one was the moat in God's eye. Um, and, and this, this probably, most of these critters are probably not in the category of cute. Uh, but this is a planet that, um, <sighs> Okay, most of these are sentient or or slightly sentient in the case of the lowest level ones. And they've basically destroyed their civilization and they're, they've become irradiated and they mutated in very strange ways. So they have a very strange body plan with uh, three arms and two legs and kind of an asymmetry to the torso. Um, let me go back a bit. But the, the, the littlest one of these, um, the watchmaker class, I would imagine that they're really cute. So they're, they're the ones that are kind of doing all of the, all the, the scut jobs for the uh, engineer class that are, that are uh, probably slightly smaller than Chewbacca, I'm guessing, or, or man size, human size, basically. Uh, but these are more um, slightly bigger than pocket pet sized. And I, I'd like to imagine they're kind of, they're kind of cuddly and they're not big enough to do any real damage, except that they do end up taking over the ship and causing a lot of damage. So I guess I take that back. <laughs> Anyone read those books? No, no. But oh, you totally should. Book. It's classic <laughs> sci-fi. Classic <laughs> sci-fi. And, and a treatise on the danger, dangers of population explosion. Okay. A little bit more serious than Tribbles, I, I, I would say, yeah. on, that, on that scale. Not as serious. I would like to mention Baby Groot. Yes. Fine. Of course, I loved Groot, but Baby Groot was so cute. And the teenage Groot was like, oh dear. Teenage Groot mouthing off to Peter. Mm -hmm. I love that he was like sporulating everywhere and, and uh, totally slovenly and wouldn't pick up after his branches and oh I just thought that was awesome. <laughs> um you know another movie that has some really cute creatures uh, I thought were great designs anatomically um by being being a amateur herpetologist my here I really like the creatures of Pandora mm -hmm. from Avatar. Yes. yes. Um, they all had six appendages. Um, I think it was eight eyes, you know, four on each side. 
uh, they all followed this like us, you know, two appendages, two eyes, mm-hmm. and so on. And they followed this design. Uh, one of the cool things about them, too, that they had, you know, their nostrils on their chest. And I thought that was really, really cool. Um, and, you know, what's really cool is Disney now owns them. But, um, yeah, it was just... Uh, Avatar, they did some really good work, really good design. Some of the creatures were scary. Uh, you know, here, but some of them were just downright yes. gorgeous. Oh, yes. Um, the Hexapede was one. Um, you know, here, let me see if I can grab a picture of it here. And open a new tab. Here we go. I'll share. Share. Oh, gorgeous. Mm. Mm-hmm. You know, I really liked the design. It had, you know, the six legs. And it was just, it was the creature that was drinking water and looked right up and then just darted off. Yeah. And, again, beautiful design. And uh, I got to give kudos to James Cameron and his group that they did s- such an amazing job think you know planning out all the fauna Mm -hmm. and vegetation on this planet they really thought that out because everything it was unique it was alien Mm -hmm. and it was so well done um i know a lot of people goes oh you know don't like the plot but look beyond the plot look what they did Mm -hmm. you know with the planet and the life and i'm really excited to see the sequels and again i have high hopes that you know the studio will keep giving us interesting creatures to look at yeah i i like the little lizards or cre- you know when they would tap and they would just spit, fly up in the air and do this spin in colors and they would just you know disappear i you know again i thought that was just like oh wow that's so cool so it's one of my favorite movies. It's lots of eye candy. Yeah. And you know, I'll probably watch that later today, maybe tonight. I'll kick back and watch that. Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. I'm planning for another panel for Console Room 2022, which I will be review uh, talking about The Bad Batch as mm-hmm. well. Sorry if I'm like, you know, talking about my future panels. <laughs> That I've got going on for console okay, room. The rest of us at the end of the panel, but okay. yes, those life forms are gorgeous. But Jim, what do you think about the dragons of How to Train Your Dragon, especially the oh. follow-up series? Yes, I love Toothless. Toothless was, I just re-saw it last night. Was uh, because I was scrolling through some of my memories, where it was. Um, a couple of policemen in New York City, and I really it was kudos to how to uh, how to train your dragon threes marketing because you know they had you know they walked uh, two cops walked up going oh somebody the ball is missing we can't drop the ball it's missing and Toothless was playing with it in an alleyway. <laughs> It, it was cute. It was clever. The cops said, put it back. And it was, you know, and it was just wonderful. It got, again, all the dragons had a unique look and design. And mm-hmm. they were, again, wonderful. Wonderful. And sometimes they had sexual dimorphism where the females look different than the males. Yes. And other times it's like, no, why would the female automatically be smaller? Because we follow the reptile scale, the female should be larger and larger. Like, yeah, this TV shirt right. shirt's like, yeah, why is the white female dragon small? No, wait. All right. You know, one of the things, uh, another movie that I really liked animated, The Crudes. Yes. Uh, mm. I have not, I mean, I'm raving about Avatar. And when you watch The Crudes, 
I, I don't know if any you know audience has seen The Croods. It's a great animated story with Ryan Reynolds, Nick Cage. Yo, know, and it's about a family of cave people trying to escape a natural disaster. And and the follow up is good too. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, but, but you've got the more of the creatures in the first one. Right. The creature designs were just outrageous. It was like, how can we show off and get really crazy? Like flying sea turtles. Um, piranha birds. Mm -hmm. uh, giant saber tooth, whatever yeah. it is. Yeah, giant saber tooth. Yeah, like a giant cat. They and an owl cat, um, and was the whales with feet? Yeah, because they hadn't lost their legs yet. Right, and it was just like, wow, you know, this was fun. It was fun visually to look at, and see them go crazy with fauna, and I, I guess I that's what makes me excited when watching certain shows or films is what they do with the fauna, the creatures in the background. You know, and do they make them, are they like little lizards? Or do they go out and just have fun with it? Um, and do these weird designs. And um, again, you know, yeah, it's just amazing. That's why I'm looking forward to the next, you know, avatar film or the next jurassic park or world i mean and see where they go with the creatures and the fauna and the designs so, i guess it's easier to do that uh in uh in cinema versus television but i i find myself wishing and seeing all these incredibly rich uh worlds like pandora um I, I, I find myself wishing I could see the same sort of richness in every episode that is on an alien planet for uh, Star Trek or Doctor Who. But I suspect it's a limitation, of course, of budget um, and and uh, the length of the story that maybe they can't have alien critters running around various different species in every scene. Uh, but I guess I, I, I'm I'm selfish and I wish I, I could see that in every single uh, franchise their their technology is uh is there it's getting cheaper getting and better series, series are able to do that i mean we saw it in discovery you know star trek discovery you know where you know they'd go to a world and see certain things fluttering around and i always thought that was cool or plants or whatnot so technology is getting there and it's getting easier you know for them to do we occasionally did see that even on uh, classic Trek. Um, yeah. Uh, like on the on the uh, the Telosian planet uh, where uh, uh, the landing party is is just arriving, and that there's there's these weird uh, uh, vibrating flower things, and you actually mm -hmm. see Spock smile. Um, but but that was relatively rare. I guess maybe maybe more so in the, when the episodes where we actually were on an alien planet um, versus on the ship. But what what we tend to see more in television is them focusing on one particular critter, right? Uh, like like uh, the adipose with Doctor Who, or the um, kind of the, the 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 meat creature on Torchwood, okay. uh, which which I thought. Um, I, I guess sort of qualifies as cute, but that was just such a sad story. I, I, um, it's hard to focus on that. Well, I did like the Batink too, because that little creature is just so <laughs> it gets so irritated when it can't eat energy and it's eating her Sonic. That know, was cute. Yeah. <laughs> here's a question to post to everyone here. Now that, you know, this is today, we're going to see, you know, the, Final holiday special with Jody is today, and then they're going to be doing a few more during the season. But Russell T. Davies is coming back. Do we think we're going to see some of the creatures 
that he designed uh, the, his series like the Adipose um, and you know some of the weird things that he pulled in the Ood I always liked the Ood I thought they were really cool kind of scary because they were so polite mm-hmm. well we had the Ood in the Flux episode so yeah but yeah. There was that part of the storyline where the Ood all of a sudden started jumping technology-wise. Their planet started. So I want to see more of that. I want to see a return to that. Okay. I, I also want to see a return to Water of Mars, but that's... that's. Yeah. I want to see a sequel to that. Okay, we've only got five minutes left, so panelists, final thoughts, or where where can people find you? Um, well, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm at Northwest Family Clinics um, on a serious uh, basis. Uh, I don't have too much of an online presence, but I am on Facebook. <laughs> I, I don't have my own web page. I There's will be, be on panels? another panel. I will be on another panel about uh, um, health healthcare professionals appreciation panel that I'm going to be recording with a couple other people tomorrow. Um, which I'll, I'll try to not to make quite as serious as it sounds. <laughs> Jim? Um, you can probably find me in a, um, I help run, uh, was it Twin Cities Doctor Who Meetup? You can, on Facebook, you can try to reach out and look for that. Um, I'm also Selfie with Strangers. So I do, it's, it's a, personal blog there on Facebook you know it's a page selfie with strangers I go out and I take pictures with strangers and you know interesting people that I meet and talk to and everything because life is a life as we all know in the last couple of years life is short and we want to reach out and meet new people and have these great small conversations so folks if you can make it to a convention like console room 2022 or 2023 you know come to them talk to people and meet wonderful people like kathy or Kristen here you know or even i you know we'll sit there we'll talk with you and we'll have a great time we can also sit back at the bar have a couple of drinks and talk for hours because that's what we do. We have a good time. We meet new people. And that's what life is about. So do what the doctor would do. Just go out and meet new people and enjoy yourself doing it. And I've got a couple of panels I'll be on at the, at the convention live. I'll be on a recorded one for the New Year's special. And you'll be able to find me in the Artist Alley at Council Room 2022, Satellite 9. And thank you all panelists. This is a great discussion. Great to see so many critters. Yes. Cool. <laughs> and hope everybody attending the convention enjoys the recordings and enjoys all the panels. <laughs>